One way to engage with scripture is to pause and ask questions when you read the Bible. Because by just reading through, we are most likely to forget what we have just read. So in this Ask the Bible challenge, staff from IBS East Asia are given one passage on the spot. Then they're given 10 minutes to read and write down their questions or thoughts on that passage. At the end of 10 minutes, they're given another five minutes to share with us their discovery. In today's episode, a staff from FBS Hong Kong shares his observation that the biggest challenge faced by staff as they seek to help students engage with scripture is reading the text is becoming less attractive to students as they don't seem to be interested in reading text materials such as the Bible. And as students in Hong Kong are packed with lots of academic activities and assignments, it's becoming harder to form Bible-engaging groups with regular Bible study meetings. Andrew is an assistant ministry staff with FES Hong Kong, mainly going to Polytechnic University and Education University Christian Fellowship since July 2021. Before that, you had one and a half years experience in a very interesting job working as a violin restorer. Do you see any relation between working as a violin restorer with your job as a staff worker now? There are similarities. <laughs> yeah, of course. Because uh, actually, the, the job as a violin restorer is actually a pretty artistic job, right? Mm, the last job is actually not only the skills of woodworking or our violin restoration. It actually urged me to have a mindset of how to look at my life or everyone's life or the world uh, more artistically. So uh, when I start doing the uh, military stuff, I try to uh, integrate the artistic ways or artistic direction, maybe Bible study or even theological uh, thinking. So together with my ministry uh, facing students, I think that's actually very interesting. Or very useful way for me to connect with the student or connect the student, connect us with the Bible. Philippians chapter 1. Okay, please. I define it different parts. The first part is uh, the writers, mentioning the writers and the receivers. And the second paragraph or second part is actually how Paul and Timothy pray for the Philippines. And the third part is actually how Paul urged the people to do or to live in their life. My first question is when I look at the first paragraph, uh, passage one, uh, first of one to two, what is the background of the writer? What they are facing or what is their situation? Uh, this, in this letter, they mentioned Paul and Timothy. Uh, where are they or what they are facing is actually my first question. Uh, the Philippines is actually the receivers. And also, who are they? What they are actually doing or facing. And the third question about this paragraph is why they will say that apart from the receivers, Philippines, and uh, why they will mention overseas and deacons. Uh, I think that's, that's a very interesting question. The writers mentioned that uh, he, he prayed for the, for the receivers. What is the uh, functions or what is actually reflects when you write a prayers in the in in a, in a letters, is it actually you're very close to them, or you have very good relationship with the receiver groups or, or other possibilities? Paul actually writes, he always pray with joy. Why he will write it like this, or actually specially mention joy in 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 this prayer? So in the next next paragraph is actually a Paul's message. There's something happening to him when he served to advance the gospel. So I will ask what actually happened to Paul. And also, uh, he say that under the situation, he's actually advancing the gospel. So apart from the situation he's uh, facing, what is meaning of advancing the gospel? Can you imagine what situation when they are facing? We especially mention rejoice. It's a very bad situation or even in a jail or something like other things you can imagine. And if you try to imagine more what is the situation close to our lives, if you want to especially uh, mention rejoice in your letters or in your, in your speaking. 
how would you apply this situation or challenge your students if you're doing this passage? Mm -hmm. I think in Hong Kong the situation now, I think somehow it's uh, quite connected to the situation of thought because uh, even for, I, I mean just uh, for students, actually the university uh, environment is actually somehow like a uh, small jail, not as open or not as uh, open as before. Fences outside the, the, the university. Only authorized the person can ah, get in. Okay. Guests or public, public uh, are very difficult to get in. So I think that's uh, the situation that is uh, connected to political or actually what the students are facing. In. I think course as experience is a very good live example of what they enjoy and how can they rejoice when uh, we are. We accept the, the gospel. We hope that this series will help you to pause and ask questions when you read the Bible. So let's engage scripture today.